today we're going to talk about large sample tests now before i start doing the problems in this particular unit let me first tell you some of the theory behind these topics now what do you understand first by a sample before we start understanding what a sample is we need to look at the theory in this unit so firstly let's start understanding what a population is first okay now firstly if you want to look at a population a population happens to be something which is really large in size okay now in if you want to study this if you want to go about asking questions it's going to take you a very very long period of time instead what you do is you take a sample of this population which means rather than me taking the whole thing here i end up taking a small part of this that is this is not going to be the entire thing i'll study instead i'm going to just study this much and when i study only this much it makes my research so much more easier now this is what you do when you do statistical large sample tests now let's say for example i want to study uh, a particular i want to do a particular research in my college let's say i want to go about asking uh, how many students in the college i work know this topic that is how many of them know large sample tests now in my college the entire population if i were to consider uh, the first puc and the second puc students put together that comes to about 2000 students okay now let's say what if i were to study the entire 2000 students by asking them the question how many of you know large sample tests now if i were to ask the entire 2000 students here becomes my first problem the first problem i have here is the entire 2000 students here are not commerce they are not in fact in the entire 2000 students if i were to consider it's about 1200 students who happen to be science and the remaining about 800 happen to be commerce if i were to go about asking the students here how many of you know large sample tests i would get a conclusion saying that the majority or say even 60 70% of the students do not know anything about large sample tests at all now that kills my assumption so rather than doing a research where i talk to everyone i in fact take up a sample so what i'm going to do here is i have 800 students who are in fact commerce let me just write it down here 800 students in fact are commerce now still it's just me who's happened to be working it's just me so i can't go about asking all the 800 students here instead what i'm going to do is i'll take a sample of this there are students who have mathematics in their combination and statistics in their combination there are students who don't have statistics at all in their combination so i'm going to exclude the students whom i don't want in the study and the next thing i'm going to do is break down my sample size further i'm going to go about asking only students in second pu because these guys are the ones who are studying large sample tests if i include first few students in the sample my results in fact will not be accurate so what i'm going to do is rather than in fact talk, uh, talking to all the 800 i'm going to start breaking this down i'll start breaking this down to say 600 okay 600 is a little too many let me break it down to 300 and let me eventually bring it down to say 100 that's approximately two classes in my college 100 students in two classes so i would in fact talk to 100 students and 100 students here would be my sample i take a sample because a sample is always easier to study than in fact a population if you were to do research let's say you want to do a research on uh, in a country like india how many people would prefer to wear cotton clothes if you look at the population of india it happens to be 1.2 billion and me walking around with a questionnaire and asking them how many of you uh, want to wear cotton clothes the research is never going to end so instead what i'm going to do is i'm going to take a sample and in that sample i'm going to decide how is it that the number of people are going to fall into it and that's when the concept of hypothesis actually begins 
Now, let me go about explaining a little bit more theory. I've always told that if you know your theory well, the solving of problems in fact becomes so much more easier. So, we've understood what a population is. We've understood what a sample is. Okay. Let's look at population mean and sample mean and sample mean. So population mean here refers to the average. I know mean is calculated differently but for the sake of simplicity I'm just going to call mean as average. Population mean is always a large number because you are looking at a population here. It always happens to be large. Instead what I'm going to usually consider is would be a sample mean. A sample mean happens to be small because a sample itself is small. Now this would what be this is in fact what the basic difference would be. Population mean is usually something we don't consider because it's not really useful for our studies because the value here happens to be large. But however, if I were to take sample mean, the value is small and it makes my calculation so much more easier. Okay, so when I go about looking at this data, I'm eventually supposed to come across a hypothesis. Now, what is the meaning of a hypothesis? A very easy way to understand a hypothesis is to look at it as as an assumption. Now, in the research world, assumption is not really something that you would. Uh, go about using blindly because it's not really a professional term. Uh, the more professional way of looking at an assumption would be a hypothesis. Now let me give you an example of a research that I conducted a few years ago to understand how many people look at a product label before they go about purchasing a product. Now my hypothesis for the research is not many people happen to read the product label. So I was under the assumption that my hypothesis here was not many. When I say not many here, I mean below 50%, 51%, in fact, don't read the product label at all. Now this is my assumption. I am yet to, in fact, test if my assumption is right or wrong. When I do a research, when I go about collecting data, I'll be able to, in fact, prove my hypothesis or I'll be able to disprove my hypothesis. Now it's perfectly fine if your hypothesis is wrong. And in the world of research, you don't really have to feel bad if your hypothesis is wrong. Because when it's wrong, you actually learn something more. Oh, in fact, it's the other way around. In fact, when I did this research, I was clearly under the assumption, my hypothesis was, the number of people who don't read product label is in the majority. That is, I was under the impression that 51% of the people who I'm going to study, 51% of the sample, uh, sorry, this is not in fact going to read product labels when they buy something. To my uh, surprise, when I did the hypothesis and I actually did the research, it turned out more than 75% of the people happened to read the product label. Now, this is what I learned by doing research. And this is what you would refer to as a large sample test. I contacted around two, three hundred uh, of my classmates, of my students, and I went on to ask them a series of questions. And after doing the analysis, I saw that more than 75% actually read the product label. In that case, my hypothesis here has been rejected. I say rejected because I was under the assumption that 51% of the people don't read it. Now, after doing the research, it shows more than 75% happen to read it. So, my hypothesis here happens to be rejected. If, let's assume, my research were to give another side of the data, that is, it says that just about, say, 35% of the people read the uh, product label. In that case, what would happen is, my hypothesis turns out to be right. My hypothesis initially, if you remember, says majority of the people do not read the uh, product label. 
but now here it says only 75% of them read so 65% I'm sorry 65% in fact actually don't go about uh, reading the hypothesis if that happens my hypothesis actually gets accepted my study was based on whether or not people actually read the product label and I was under the impression that okay people don't read it in one case I could actually arrive at a result saying that my hypothesis is in fact been accurate I, I assumed everything correctly in other case it could say I did not assume it right so this is in fact what you would do in the whole unit here in the next video I'm going to talk about examples and in that I'll explain how you use this information you see here and you come out go doing your problems okay uh, thank you for your time I hope you guys found this video useful and yes I did manage to fix the autofocus so even if I do this all that the camera doesn't go blurry uh, do subscribe to my videos and have a nice day bye